this is a distressing news as per usual for me isn't it? when it comes to flipping Manchester United but unfortunately Manchester United somehow managed to lose 2-1 against Istanbul the other night in the Champions League I guess it's not that much of a, it's not that much of a bad defeat for us seeing as we basically won our first up two opening matches against two very strong opponents in PSG and Red Bull Leipzig so there's sort of two points two or well, six points we probably um, didn't think we would get maybe we thought we would have got four points out of the six so you can afford to maybe lose one against a weaker opponent and then bounce back against a better opponent but of course it gives you a mountain to climb up and um yeah a lot of a lot of blowback a lot of uh, the fallout from this has been pretty grave especially um considering how we played in the week against arsenal right so lineup wise you know of course we lost 2-1 as you can see on the screen you're probably aware of that but lineup wise as per usual this is where all the always the alarm bells go for me when it comes to united um again he I, I guess he kind of went for the diamond didn't really go for the diamond instead he played this weird system with the regular back five with the um exception of dean henderson and axel twanzebi but again pretty easy replacements for the gay and lindelof whoever it may be and then w two deep lining midfielders to basically protect the back four and add some you know, necessary you know protection and also as a base of our midfield were Matic and Van der Beek. Van der Beek for the most part from what I've seen of him has never been a number six he's always kind of strike stroke strike to me as like a conventional number eight in terms of getting box to box or an out and out number 10 in terms of he occupies that space right just again it's hard to describe these players because most modern day players aren't you know your conventional number types right you don't really have you, there's no more Stuart Downings right it's a bad example but you know wingers are just like hug the touchline kick it to the bar and then whip it in they don't really exist anymore so wingers are sort of like inverted they're sort of like uh, Serge Nabry types and Ferran Torres types right they're sort of like you know able to um, cover the width for the 18 of the yeah of the penalty area Regardless, I don't think Van der Beek is a deep lining midfielder in any way, shape or form, right? He can play as an eight, box to box, or a number 10, occupy that position behind the strikers. Somehow he's playing man to, you know, uh, hand to hand with Matic, which is always going to be a complete error. Um, that kind of set my alarm bells ringing. And then, of course, moving further forward, you had Rashford, Bruno Fernandes and Juan Mata as a free providing the support and the balls necessary for Martial for on his own and it was, for me it was a simple disaster like as soon as I saw that formation I was like Jesus Christ and for me the, the the issue here isn't the players and it's more so the system and the shape um you go through it one by one with the exception of Martial you go to Mata and you think to yourself Matter's best position is within this number 10 or this sort of area right here where he's occupying right but he needs more structure and more width around him so that he can be impactful in that zone when he's playing as a conventional right wing forward he doesn't have the pace nor the dynamism in order to hurt people but what he does have is a brain so get him in a position where he should be playing so matter should always be i've maintained it should always be a replacement for bruno fernandez who seems to be Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's golden boy right that's the position they should be playing in. Van der Beek too. Van der Beek should only be considered to be played in the position of a Bruno Fernandes. And yeah, these two should be competing for that same position. As maybe should Pogba. Or maybe you should say Pogba's like a, you know, he plays maybe on the left of, of, the, of the back too. But if that's the case, in my opinion, because we've all kind of assumed that Pogba can't defend. And if he can't defend, he can only play in this number 10 position. So you then have to ask yourself, if you're Solskjaer, are you brave enough to drop for Bruno Fernandes and rotate Matter, Van der Beek and Pogba in the same position because that's basically what's happening. Eventually we'll have to let go of one of those players but that essentially is the case. Then you've got Rashford playing on the left who's meant to provide the width and the, you know, stretch the teams and, you know, be dynamic and attacking but again, against a low block team such as um, Istanbul who's set up the way you see on the screen, Denver by up front, two banks of four with a person in the middle, right? Very, very compact um and essentially just played on the counter and completely done us with two very quickly well taken goals mostly due to our own defensive mistakes but just exploiting some of the confusion in this middle of this park which i think had a lot to say with the confusion in the first goal where we take a corner and somehow off the back of a corner we get completely hooked we get completely suckered into trying to cross the ball into the box and then with the move breaks down one of the sample player gets it 
pops it over the top. It's not even that great of a ball. He just kicks into space. Then Bobby Brown runs onto it and finishes it in the same style that he did against uh, Steven Gerrard that famously denied them winning the trip, winning the league. No, no one to be found. Harry Maguire, nowhere to be found. 85 million pound uh, central defender. Absolutely um, nowhere to be found. Wan Bissaka, don't know where he was. Twan Zabi, don't know where he was. Matic, don't know where he was. Shaw, for some reason, was in a box trying to head a ball. It's just a complete shit show. So that already told me that what was going to happen in the game. And I guess moving on from that, the backlash from this game has been pretty substantial um, for the most part. So a lot of people now are questioning whether or not Solskjaer should be in a good job which you know is a standard question that needs to be asked for any top club but unfortunately with our fan base at the moment maybe because Soul Shark has got such a legendary cult-like status at United a lot of fans desperately myself included wanted him to be successful right I really 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 wanted his scores to be a success at the club I honestly did um no kid like Skulls, I mean, sorry, Solskjaer's career at United was essentially the stuff of dreams, right? Being able to, you know, maybe not being the the starter and the main attraction, but always being relied upon to come on and score very important, very important goals, um, crucial goals sometimes in the, in the span of a cup competition, and really just set the tempo, right? Whenever he came on, he raised he raised the tempo. He was very forward thinking, uh, always on the front foot, always attacking, always pressing defenders, and of course, once he went in front of the goal like his finishing was just absolutely another level just just fantastic finishing left foot right foot header like incredible i remember there was a time where he played in the right midfield when david beckham left just to, maybe the season when david beckham had the argument with them um, saw shot with saf and they kind of got into the heated argument i think that was after he you know threw the boot in the change room and social had to play a couple matches on right wing and he was great right very intelligent football player so a lot of people went to do right wanted him to do well but Unfortunately, at this level of football, there is not there is just just the name of the game. If the team doesn't perform, the first person to go is always a coach. Even more so at United, where we don't have the ownership or the footballing structure to really accommodate managers when they're going through rough spells. We don't have that. Um, you know, we don't have that infrastructure in place. <coughs> So the only thing that they can do is go and hire another coach to maybe get the best out of the players that they have um, amassed. Because, you know, if you believe what you read on the papers, Solskjaer didn't get most of his number one targets, but no manager does. But a pretty hefty amount of them would have made a lot of changes to this overall team. Not tactically, but I think in terms of individual performances, but still, um, this is really no surprise. So to see some of the kickback against fans wanting Solskjaer to, to go or to resign or thinking he's not good enough for the job is a bit odd considering um, the amount of success we've had in the past. This should just be standard procedure for a team like us, isn't it? But what do I know? And then 